We haven't spoken about Boeing for a while. Maybe it's time we do. I got nightmares in my head. I fear thoughts build up until I can't feel. My mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. I fear the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature. Me much deeper. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, the most perilous bit for the Starliner comes next. The trip home from orbit is fraught with risk. And for Boeing's issue-ridden Starliner, the next phase of the mission will require the Starliner to hit Earth's thick atmosphere while traveling more than, get this, 22 times the speed of sound. Have you ever traveled that fast? Have you ever traveled the speed of sound? How about twice the speed of sound? How about 20 times the speed of sound? You can imagine being in some kind of craft or capsule that's moving that fast. It's got to be pretty special. The process will bake the spacecraft's exterior at roughly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 1,648 degrees Celsius. Have you ever experienced those sorts of temperatures in any vehicle? So trajectory-wise and in terms of the engineering and materials used in the heat shield, there's not much room for error. There's not much room, Boeing, for error. To make things even worse, it's not as though the craft is going to not land on land. land. Well, landing on land is not only trickier because uh, one has to carry additional equipment, it's unconventional. It's arguably not typically how space capsules touch down. Now, to make things even worse... I mean, this is really just normal in a rocket scenario. You know, after the sides of the craft have been baked and scorched and exposed to these incredible pressures, you know, the blistering movement through the sky 20 times, 22 times the speed of sound, then the parachutes need to deploy. They need to deploy without a hitch. They need to deploy in such a way to slow down this projectile that is going multiple times the speed of a speeding bullet and parachutes can be finicky I don't know if you've ever jumped out of a plane and had the chute not quite deploy properly I've had that and now you've got the additional issues of you know it going out into space and and all of these uh, extreme pressures at work and so these are the some of the challenges facing this brand new experimental craft What is going to happen? Well, we're going to find out in the next few days. Before we get to the rest of this analysis, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you're enjoying this sort of content, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So Boeing has redesigned and tested these parachutes, specifically these parachutes, as recently as January. So they've only really been kind of approved and uh, given the green light, they've only really been in use, I guess, uh, for the past, what is it, uh, three, four months. That's really not a long um, kind of track record. And so they need to now um, safely deploy and slow the capsule down before it reaches terra firma. They've got to kind of do their job um, kind of in the first real um, kind of situation, right? And and in, in, and this time you've got lives on the line. Now, now, to be clear about what Boeing is trying to pull off here, Starliner will be the first American-made capsule to parachute to a landing on the ground rather than splash down in the ocean. Boeing's hoping that th- that that approach will make it easier to recover and refurbish the st- Starliner after flight. It's kind of a similar approach, not quite as elegant as SpaceX, but it's the same kind of thing 
we don't want the craft to land in the sea and then maybe can't really use it again it's that kind of sort of approach and so in the space sense first tend to come with steep learning curves oh we didn't realize this oh we didn't expect that meanwhile pressure around boeing is at a peak i'm talking about the company there's a lot going on in the background there's been so much news i haven't really reported on any of it i have noticed it i have kept up to speed with it you know you've actually had dave calhoun um answering to congress and some pretty st- kind of stiff questioning that's all going on right now and there are a lot of things going on at industry level you know they are not selling any of their 737 maxes i think they've, they've had zero orders of late and so there are real problems with the parent company and in a situation like that where you've got all of these stresses going on you can imagine that some of the people who would normally be focused or kind of distracted would normally have the um, comfort of just concentrating on what they're doing, probably have people looking over their shoulders saying, we have to, we absolutely have to get this right, no mistakes. And it's like not no pressure, this is huge pressure. And CNN provides some backstory in this regard. I'll put a link to that article. It's a really good article in the description. Quote, Starliner's journey to this historic crew test mission began 10 years ago in 2014 when NASA tapped both Boeing and SpaceX to develop a spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts to the International Space Station. And really what that was all about was they basically uh, retired the space shuttle and they needed something in its place. And so they basically tapped two companies, basically said, okay, can you help us um, answer, fix this problem, um, rise to this challenge? And of course, the one company did so with flying colors, the other not so much. Now, according to the article, at the time when this... um, tender was essentially given to Boeing and SpaceX, Boeing was actually seen as the more capable. Uh, According to the words of this article, Boeing was seen as the stalwart aerospace giant that would likely get the job done first, that would likely do the job better, that would would, um, be the leading contender, and SpaceX would be the sort of unpredictable newcomer, the sort of dark horse in the game you know and perhaps um, someone who would um, fail and then guess what happened over over the past decade the opposite happened the tides have shifted now spacex is the um, favored contender and boeing is sort of seen as kind of unpredictable and one could perhaps even say unreliable SpaceX's uh, crew uh, Dragon spacecraft actually safety com- safely completed their first crewed mission in 2020. That's four years ago. So uh, SpaceX basically beat NASA, uh, beat beat Boeing to the finish line with a margin of four years. That that's quite a safety margin. And so Boeing has been slow to get their show on the road. Uh, It's been very haphazard, um, and all of this feels somewhat analogous to Boeing being outshone and outgunned in terms of product and execution by rival Airbus. They don't seem to be a terribly innovative company when it comes to kind of, um, you know, on-your-toes engineering. Maybe they were once upon a time. They don't seem to be that same... um, what's the word, fit and nimble company in the engineering sense. According to the article, spacecraft issues, on the other hand, have marred Boeing Starliner's program practically every step of the way. The Starliner vehicle has faced years of delays, many setbacks and many additional expenses. And all of these have cost the company dearly. It's cost them more than $1 billion dollars. And so the first Starliner test mission flown without a crew was in late 2019. And that was riddled with missteps. So they were, they got something into the air um, 
without a crew a year before SpaceX reached the finish line. And what, what actually happened? Well, that vehicle misfired in orbit. That was a symptom of software problems. And there was a coding error, a serious coding error that set the internal clock off by 11 hours. That's not a small little glitch. That's, that's huge. Then there was a second uncrewed flight test in 2022. This is already a two-year backlog on SpaceX. And I mean, that was a crewed mission. This is still an uncrewed mission. And there were still software issues and still trouble with the vehicle's thrusters. Guess what? The flight that finally went into orbit a um, couple of weeks ago still had trouble with the vehicle's thrusters. Now, I actually was at Cape Canaveral in May this year when Starliner's launch was scrubbed with about two hours to go. Then there was another launch scheduled a few days later that was scrubbed with about four minutes to the launch. When Starliner did finally launch, as we as we know, it didn't it didn't it still didn't go off without a hitch. So you know, Boeing executives, according to the article, have repeatedly tried to say you know make it explicit that the Starliner program is completely different from the company's other units, totally different, totally separate. You know, don't conflate the one with the other. Um, especially the commercial aircraft division, and actually visited it or, or drove by it, the one in uh, Charleston. And guess what? The commercial aircraft division has been the center of scandals for years. And so um, should we not take what's going on with Boeing seriously? And so I, I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility. If Boeing, if Boeing screw up a, a Starliner, if Boeing screw up on this particular um, project, I think they're going to suffer massive reputational damage and they're going to incur serious trust issues. That's additional to those they already have to deal with. Also, if the commercial airline side sees some sort of disaster during the same period right now, let's, let's hold thumbs that we don't, but if that does happen, that might even impact confidence in Boeing's um, space ambitions, you know, the ambitions for space vehicles. Either way, the pressure is on Boeing. A lot is riding on Boeing's fortunes or misfortunes. And um, how they play out over the next few days is going to be absolutely crucial. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.